the management of TB spine. Tuberculosis or TB is caused by an organism called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Although most frequently found in the lungs, TB bacteria can attack any part of the body, such as the kidneys, spine and brain. If left untreated, TB disease can be fatal. The overall prevalence of spinal tuberculosis in South Africa is currently 948 per 100,000. Trending upward, this is driven by the coexistent HIV endemic and the effect of HIV on TB reactivation. Musculoskeletal manifestations of TB are more frequent in the HIV host, reported as high as 60% compared to the normal 3-5% incidence. So, how does TB reach the musculoskeletal system? Mycobacterium tuberculosis usually reaches the bone through the bloodstream, although direct spread can also occur. The long bones in vertebra are favoured sites for hematogenous spread. The lesions are often solitary but can be multifocal, particularly in patients with an underlying immunodeficiency. Spinal tuberculosis accounts for 50% of musculoskeletal TB, commonly affecting the lower thoracic and thoracolumbar region. As previously mentioned, the natural history of tuberculosis may vary. A primary infection localized to the lungs may result in progressive primary tuberculosis and massive hematogenous spread. Alternatively, the organism may establish latency. The MTB establishes pulmonary or extrapulmonary dormancy, waiting patiently for its next performance. Secondary tuberculosis caused by reactivation or reinfection may result in progressive secondary TB, predisposing the host once again, to massive hematogenous spread. The presentation of TB spine. A detailed patient history should explore TB constitutional symptoms such as fever, weight loss, malaise and fatigue. Special inquiry regarding back pain and neurological compromise should also be noted. On examination, Signs of spinal tuberculosis include a short kyphus, gibbous deformity, increased lordosis, paraspinal abscess, and neurological fallout. The special investigations for spinal tuberculosis include an ESR, MAN2 test, Vidal and Brucella complement fixation, radiology investigations such as an X-ray, MRI, or axial CT scan, and biopsy for culture sensitivity histology and PCR. The differential diagnosis for TB spine include pyogenic spondylitis, typhoid and brucella spondylitis, and congenital kyphosis due to hemivertebra. Here are some examples of X-ray and MRI findings consistent with TB spine. Medical management is the mainstay of management for TB of the spine. As per Grootiskeer guidelines, four drugs are used for a duration of nine months, namely isoniazide, rifampicin, ethionamide and pyrazinamide. The doses of these drugs are weight-related. A clinical, radiological and ESR assessment is carried out at nine months and the duration of drug therapy can be later increased to 12 months if necessary. Although controversial in the management of TB spine, the indications for surgery include instability of anterior and posterior columns, neurological deficit, deformity, unresponsiveness to medical therapy, and an unclear diagnosis. The procedures include debridement, abscess drainage, anterior debridement, decompression and fusion, 
posterior instrumentation with or without decompression, combined anterior and posterior procedures, global reconstruction by posterior approach and minimal invasive surgery. Factors taken into consideration prior to surgery include the patient's age, location of the bony lesion, presence of medical comorbidities, degree of kyphosis, region of spine involved, and the experience and preference of the surgeon. In conclusion, an increasing prevalence of TB correlates with an increase in the occurrence of TB spine. Many of these cases do not require reconstructive surgery and medical care remains the mainstay of management.